AP Chemsters, this is Mrs. Vandewoy bringing you a 15.6 edition of the Blank Wall. Uh, this is a really important section. This is probably the more common thing that you might find on the AP exam is this section. Um, and we are going to be finding the H3O um, concentration and the pH of strong and weak acid solutions. Um, like I said, this section is so important. Keep focused or keep up, stay focused, ask questions, do your homework, do the problems in, in, as we go along. So when I say pause, you need to pause. When I say calculate, calculate. So have your calculators handy and let's get started. So we have a, a solution here. What are the components of the solution? Well, uh, we have this um, weak acid. How do I know it's a weak acid? Well, I have a double arrow, so it's an equilibrium. So I have a weak acid, I'm going to throw in some water. So what do I make? We've done this before, haven't we? We make some H+, plus, we make some A-, minus. Uh, we have some HA that didn't dissociate, but, but what else is in, in solution is the water. So what do I know that water is going to do? Does water self-ionize? Yes, we learned that. So I'm going to make some more H plus and some more OH minus. So you're telling me that my beaker of water uh, has acid and base in it? Yes, it does. Does it have much of it? No, it does not. So don't worry about it. Drink up, okay? Um, so it says, what is the effect of adding more H plus to water according to Chatelier? So if I add more H plus into water, um, what's going to happen? Well, I have H plus here, and I have H plus in a sense here. So if I add a more acid into the solution, um, I'm going to decrease my conjugate bases, and I'm going to shift these to the left, okay? Um, so I wrote shift left, but you know, again, not much is going to change as far as the hydroxide. You're not going to do this too much because how much hydroxide was in solution to start with. Not a whole lot. So um, the first equation will probably have more effect than the second equation. Okay. Um, it says if the concentration of the strong acid is roughly less than uh, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. Well, think about what's happening. That's a really, really small concentration of that strong acid. Um, what's going to start playing in effect? So uh, let me erase this for a second. And let's suppose that this is not a weak acid, but let's suppose it is a strong acid. Okay. And what's going to happen here according to number four? Okay. So if this is a strong acid, I'll put an SA here, um, and I have a very, very small molarity of this, I'll have a very small molarity of H+. Plus. So will this H plus now come into play? And the answer is yes, it is, because um, I don't have a whole lot of, of H plus from either source. So combined, they will determine the pH, OK? Now, if I have a, a fairly strong concentration of the strong acid, then it's going to dominate my beaker. I'm going to have a whole lot of the, um, uh, the H plus from the strong acid if I have a, a high concentration. But if it's a pretty low concentration, then you have to also consider the self-ionization of water. All right, so let's check on here. What are we going to do now? We're going to focus on the major species. So it says at high concentrations, this is what I was just talking about, the ionization of water is insignificant. The dominant species is your strong acid. Uh, so again, for strong acids, K or the H plus is completely ionized. And the question is, all right, what is the Ka for these acids? So let's kind of review this. So Ka is, I'm going to just write products over reactants. I know you've seen that before. And if it is self-ionized, I have no of that acid left, correct? So my products, I have lots of product, uh, I have a big product, but I have no reactants. What is any number divided by zero? Think about it. It's infinity. All right, so we don't use the Ka uh, for those six strong acids. Uh, so problem number 20 says if you have a concentration of HCl is 0 0.100, fill out the ice table, which is kind of maybe not the correct thing to say, but do it for me anyway and determine the pH. So pause this and please do that. 
All right, so the first thing they ask you to do is to fill out the ice table. So I kind of did that right here, okay? Uh, I guess my font was a little too big. Um, so I have zero HCl left, and they're not asking me to calculate anything with Ka, and it's a good thing because you really can't. What is the, what are they asking you to find? It is the uh, the pH, and what does pH depend on? This value only, okay? That value only. So what is my concentration um, of my um, value here. So while pH is equal to negative log of H plus, what is my H plus for all my HCLs for the equal amount? Notice that these uh, columns are the same height. So for all the HA I start off with, I have the exact same amount of the H plus. And again, this is for strong acids only. You can do this. So what is the negative log of 0.1? Did you figure it out? It is one. So your, your pH is one. Pretty acidic, isn't it? So what's going on in the next one? Well, I'm going to use another strong acid and calculate the same thing or calculate the pH of a 0.5 molar HNO3. So pause this and do it. Okay, so again, we are working with a pretty uh, high concentration of the strong acid. Uh, remember our rule of thumb above was uh, anything less than um, 1 times 10 to the negative 5th. I have to think about water. This is much larger than 1 times 10 to the negative 5th. So I can just say the uh, concentration of my acid, my strong acid, is my dominant species. So the H plus that comes from, in this case, nitric acid, will provide the uh, H plus for my pH. And and um, so the negative log of 0 0.500 is 0 0.301. So watch what happens um, when I calculate the pH of 1 times 10 to the negative 12th molar HCl. All right, so I kind of start off with the same thing again. Whoops, hang on. There we go. Uh, and you just, I ruined the surprise, I just realized. Uh, so anyway, um, here's the same thing. pH is negative log of HCl, and I plug in these values, right? So I have the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 12, and that is equal to 12, isn't it? Now, what does this mean? If you have a pH of 12, it means that you have a basic solution. Okay, why is that a problem? You're adding a strong acid to water. How can you force it to become a base? It doesn't become a base. So my pH does not come from the strong acid. And actually, um, I didn't think about adding or I didn't consider adding the H plus from the HCl and the H plus from the water because this is a magnitude of 100 times smaller than that of water. Um, so that that's not going to you know make any effect there. So the pH comes from the water only, so the pH is 7. So if you add uh, a molarity of a strong acid that's 1 times 10 to the negative 12, I don't even know what that is, 1 quadrillionth or something, um, it is not going to affect the pH. The pH will come from the water only. Um, and that's, again, because you have uh, a huge difference in molarity of the H plus from HCl and the H plus from the water. So I didn't even consider adding the two together. Okay, um, let's look at the next problem because we do have to consider that. All right, so you want to prepare a solution by adding 90 mils of a 5 molar HCl and then you're going to add uh, 30 mils of 8 molar HNO3. They're both strong acids um, and they're both very high concentrations, okay? And for that reason, the H plus, the acid is going to come from the strong acids and I'm not even going to consider the H plus uh, from the water, okay? Uh, water is added to the final volume is 1 liter. Calculate all that stuff, okay? Well, what did I figure out first? I kind of sang myself that little song about the moles on top of the mountain and I multiplied the um, liters by molarity and I got the moles, okay? So I have 0.45 moles of acid from HCl. I have 0.24 moles of acid from HNO3. When I say acid, I mean H+. 
So how many moles of H plus do I actually have? I had the two together and I got 0.69. Notice how convenient they had one liter. So if I have 0.69 moles of total H plus, I have a 0.69 molar uh, concentration of H plus. So I can go ahead now and calculate my H plus. Go ahead and you do that too. Okay. And hopefully my calculator was working. I got a pH of 0.16. So I just figured out the pH and the H plus concentration. So what's left is pOH and then the hydroxide concentration. So what I did is subtracted uh, 14 minus 0 0.16. And I got the pOH of 13.84. Now you can figure out hydroxide concentration one of two ways. You can say 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 0.69, or you could just do how I did it, um, is take that pOH and take 10 to the negative pOH, and you're going to get the same exact answer. You're going to get 1.4 times 10 to the negative 14th. And does that make sense to you? Yeah, you're going to have a whole lot less of hydroxide why is that? Go back to this idea here. So if I add more acid to the solution, how, what does Le Chatelier say is going to happen? It's going to shift left. All right. So in the case of water, I'm not going to make a whole lot more H2O, am I? Why not? Because I don't have a whole lot of hydroxide to start with, only 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. But if I add so much this, what little I had is going to go to make some more water, and I'm left with 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, really, what was that, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 14th uh, hydroxide concentration. Why? Because I added a lot of H+, plus, wiping out what little hydroxide I had to, to begin with. All right, so remember, I start out with 1 times 10 to the negative 7th uh, concentration of hydroxide from the water, and by adding all this acid, I use up most of the hydroxide, and it shifts to the uh, left, decreasing the amount of hydroxide. Okay, um, this might be a good place to pause because this next section is going to take some time. All right, so uh, why don't you go ahead and read over the rules and join me on the blank wall for um, this section, part two, and we'll actually do these calculations. So I won't be rushed. I can say this. Don't wait to be great. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.